Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new, I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to a chaotic video, what's new? <laughs> Hi guys, today is a jumble of different clips I've collected over the last couple of days and I'm going to sit down today and talk a little bit more about the books I've acquired so far in 2022. These merge of clips include my first ever trip to the library not only in 2022 but also since like 2017 because I went into the library, I gave them my library card to check out some books and they were like, you owe a 75p for a delayed return of a book from 2017. So I'm guessing that was the last time I went in there. So the library has a little a section of this video. I also have a very mini four minute clip of a come book shop with me video where I literally just buy one book that I really need for my February TBR and I thought I'd take you guys long seeing as this video is basically just like a collection of clips from me buying books and me getting books in the first couple of weeks of January of the new year and then finally today I'm going to sit down and discuss with you the books I've pre-ordered so far in 2022 as well as like a mini Christmas book haul and the books I've acquired so far in 2022. So without that little ramble let's just dive straight in to the first segment of today's video. I thought we'd start off with my like mini Christmas book haul. I was very very surprised about the amount of books that turned up at my doorstep around Christmas time and I've never actually officially sat down and showed you guys which books were gifted to me this year. Very very thankful to every single one of you that had gifted me a book this year for, or last year for Christmas even. So I'm just going to run through all of them. I'm not going to give main synopsis of lots of these because they're pretty self-explanatory but without further ado let's hop into the mini Christmas book haul. The first book I received for Christmas from one of my lovely lovely subscribers and I now call one of my best friends for through this book YouTube community is Z and she gifted me the seven day switch by Kelly Arms and the fact that she actually wrote in this book reasons why I would actually enjoy it was so so sweet of her and she sent it all the way from Germany bless her little heart and I'm just so, so excited to read it. I've never heard this book before, which is why I love receiving books that I haven't heard of because they are personally picked out by people who know your reading taste. And I think that's such a thoughtful, thoughtful gift. And the way Z was like, here's a little list to give you an idea of what I'm talking about because she thinks I'm really gonna enjoy this book. There's Disney references. One character has a spin bike, <laughs> is written in dual perspective. The characters are in their late 20s to early 30s. It's about female friendship. It's a character driven book. It's kind of unpopular on booktube and you'll fly through it because it's less than 300 pages. The fact that she went out of her way to find a book that she thinks I'm gonna really, really enjoy and then write a little note in it to say why I would like it. Literally, my heart burst when I received this parcel from Z and thank you once again. I know I've thanked you enough times already, but once again, thank you so much for this book and this kind, thoughtful gift. Next book I received was from Rhiannon from The Welsh Reader and that was Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I have been wanting to read this book since I read Normal People, but I just have been putting it off for some reason. I have no idea why. I am sure I'm going to really, really enjoy it because I unsurprisingly really like Sally Rooney's writing style in Normal People. I didn't think I would because it took a while to get into because she doesn't really use like dialogue as such. Like it's written as dialogue, but it's not like grammatically correct in the fact that it's dialogue. There's like no speech marks and stuff. So it takes a little bit of time to get used to. I wasn't sure if I'm going to like it. And then I read Normal People and I gave it a four stars. I really, really enjoyed it because it is just about mundane people doing mundane things. So I, as soon as I read Normal People, I wanted to read Conversations with Friends and I really, really appreciate Rhiannon from getting this for me. And I don't actually know what this one is about. Oh my God. <laughs> The main character is my sister's name. Frances is a 21 year old, cold headed and observant, a student in Dublin and an aspiring writer, and now she performs spoken word with her best friend Bobby, who used to be her girlfriend. But when they are interviewed and then befriended by Melissa, a well known journalist who is married to Nick, an actor, they enter into a world of beautiful houses, raunchous dinner parties, and holidays in Brittany. But when Frances and Nick get unexpectedly closer, the sharply witty emotional verse, Frances is forced to honestly confront her own vulnerabilities for the first time. To be honest, this book sounds more up my alley than normal people did, so I'm super, super excited to get to this one. So thank you again, Rhiannon. The next book I received from Leandra, and I'd actually put a hold on the Libby app for this before I even received it because I really, really wanted to read it like ASAP. And then Leandra surprised me by gifting me this book and I cannot thank her enough. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Leandra, for gifting me this book. And that is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. And 
Everyone has been raving about this book and when I read the synopsis I was like oh my god I didn't even realise it was fake dating and if you guys know me I love me fake dating. I think it is one of my favourite romance tropes of all time. I just love it and I have no idea why but it gets me right in the feels. I always fall for the two main characters who are fake dating and then it turns into something more. I absolutely adore it and the fact that this book is a wedding in Spain, the most infuriating man, three days to convince your family that you're actually in love. This just sounds so up my alley. I was actually surprised at how big it was, but I'm hoping it just means that it's gonna be juicier and it's just gonna absolutely fly by and I'm absolutely gonna enjoy it. I'm just so, so excited to read this one. So yeah, thank you again, Leandra, for gifting me this one. And then from Georgia, she did not have to, but the fact that we are now buddy reading the book she gifted me just shows that a book can be a gift that keeps on giving and I absolutely love that. So Georgia kindly gifted me It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This will be my first ever Colleen Hoover book and I think it's a perfect place to start. I have heard nothing but incredible things from not only just booktubers but my friends like Chloe has absolutely loved this book so I'm super 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 excited to read it and I'm going to be reading it in February with Georgia as a buddy read like I mentioned before and Georgia also gifted me my favourite Tony's flavour chocolate bar and it has already been eaten and consumed and enjoyed to high heaven. So thank you so much, Georgia. I have no idea what this book is about once again, but I've heard nothing but amazing things. I just know there's a lot of trigger warnings, but I think I'm prepared. And sometimes the ones who love you is the one who hurts you the most. I'm intrigued. And then Chloe, the wonderful Chloe, you all know Chloe, she gifted me a book that I never heard of before. And like I said, it was Z's book. I just love that, that people can go out their way and pick out a book that they think they're gonna love by knowing you so much. So she picked up Big Summer by Jennifer Weiner, I wanna say is how you pronounce the name. And I had never heard this book before, but it sounds right up my alley. So I'm hoping Chloe has picked well with this one. And it's just like I keep saying, it's the fact that people can go out their way and pick out a book that you've never heard of before because they know your reading taste. And I just think it's such a thoughtful gift. And all I kind of know by reading the blurb of this book is it's about a friendship that goes like they break up, friendship break up, and it goes disastrously wrong when they're on holiday in Cape Cod. And it just sounds interesting and I'm actually really, really intrigued to read it if you guys know I did the first video of this series and I want to do more I just the time always gets away from me where I read books that are unknown to booktube and this would definitely fit the category for that so hopefully I can return all of those videos soon and get to reading this one so thank you again Chloe you are special I love you and then the sweet sweet Emily from Emily Caffeine Reads one of my closest booktube friends who I met last summer along with Rhiannon and Chloe gifted me two books like she did not have to but bless her kind heart she gifted me a book two books that I really really want to read and hopefully I can get to soon and I know one of them is going on to my February TBR and that is The Bride Test. I have read this book before but I haven't read it physically and I read it via audiobook in one day to complete a prompt for a readathon and I just don't I didn't absorb anything and I want to reread the Kiss Quotient, The Bride Test, and then read The Heart Principle for the first time. So for having the physical copies of these books will be very beneficial for the reading vlog that is coming in February to celebrate Valentine's Day. So this book has come in very handy, so thank you, Emily. And then the other one she got me, she didn't have to, but I'm so, so excited. It's another fake dating book. Surprise, surprise. And that is Hanny and Yoshu's Guide to Fake Dating. And I have heard nothing but amazing things about this book. But when I first heard about it, I thought it was a middle grade. It just looked like a middle grade to me, but it is a YA. I am definitely leaning out of YA these days, but this book just has me so intrigued. And I do want to read more sapphic relationships and lesbian books this year in 2022. And I think this is going to be the perfect place to start. I just hope I can get to it soon. Easy going and popular Hani Khan has it all until she comes out as bisexual and her friends don't believe her. An academic overachiever issue day has a lot to prove, but her shot at head girl relies on being popular. Their solution? Pretend to be dating even though they hardly know each other and definitely don't like each other. As they get closer, things get messy. It just sounds so good and I'm hoping good things from this YA sapphic romance. The final book that I got gifted this year and it was a complete surprise. I wasn't expecting it at all. I basically just put it on my wish list because I was like, I want to read this book to my children one day and I don't know when this book is going to become like out of print and hard to get hold of so I should get it now before that happens and I can't get hold of it when I have kids in like five, seven, eight years or whatever. So I put it on my wish list purposely so I didn't forget about it. And then someone gifted it to me. So thank you so much, Emma, for gifting me this book. 
you didn't have to, but it's the newly re-released version of the Christmas Saurus, but the picture book version. So basically the story behind this is that Tom Fletcher, when he wrote a Christmas Saurus back in like 2016, 17, he always used to adapt the book so his younger sons could read it and understand it. So he kind of like rewrote it in picture book form and just made the story easier to understand for two to three, four year old readers that can be read aloud by parents and listened to by children and he was like why don't I make a picture book for it so it's been years in the making and finally the picture book version of the Christmas Christmasaurus is out I personally probably won't read this book myself because I can obviously read the original Christmas Christmasaurus book which I love and hold very very dear to my heart but because I love it so much and I want my kids to experience the magic that Tom Fletcher has created around Christmas I was like, I don't have kids in the horizon at all, but I was like, I need to get this book now so I can read it to my future kids. And it's just absolutely stunning. Like the end pages, I know it's not Christmas anymore. Oh, the gift note fell out, but it's just absolutely stunning. Like, look at that. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's illustrated by the same illustrator that has done, that has done all the other Tom Fletcher books as well. And I just, absolutely adore his drawing and illustrating style and I'm so 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 glad to have this in my collection now ready for my future kids and I'm sure they'll be appreciative of it as well so thank you so much Emma for this one and that is all the books I received from you lovely guys this Christmas thank you thank you thank you so much again for all of you for gifting me books I do not expect it but I'm very very thankful and I'm so so excited to get to all of them some sooner rather than later the book I wanted to discuss in this book haul kind of segment is the first book I brought myself in 2022. I heard about this book through page from page in a chapter. I absolutely adore her channel. She is so good. She talks about books so well and she has such a wide range of reading tastes and I just love getting book recommendations from her. And she spoke about this non-fiction book taking the simple pleasures in life and making them meaningful and by that it's like one of my favorite things is like opening the window and hearing the birds chirp or opening a brand new bar of mayonnaise and marmite having it not like the surface not being touched that's one of my favorite things and I'm very much one of those people who try and find joy in the littlest things and this book is all about that and that is The Joy of Small Things by Hannah Jane Parkinson and the cover is just so simplistic and so stunning and me and my boyfriend went into Waterstones very early on in the new year and I wasn't expecting to pick this book up at all to be fair but I saw it there and I had £10 from my dad's parents so my grandparents and it was a £10 exactly and I was like you know what Christmas money I should buy it I should bend it on a book so I can message my grandparents thank you and say what I purchased with the money rather than just going on like fuel or petrol or just like groceries or something like food and snacks so I was like I'll treat myself to this book that Paige has absolutely raved about it's on one of her best books of 2021 and it sounds right up my alley but and I think Paige said it's a collection of the author's articles that she's written for like the guardian or something about savoring these small pleasures in life and i just cannot wait to read it i'm really hoping i can read it soon so that isn't the first book i purchased myself in 2022 and i'm very very happy with the purchase so now let's hop into my come book shopping with me segment of this video i will see you back here in a second hi guys <laughs> this video is going to be chaotic so i'm sorry about that but it's my life at the minute my life is pretty chaotic but I just wanted to sit down and record this very small clip because I wanted to do a whole come book shopping me video realizing that one I don't really have the money to do so right now because it's just been Christmas two I don't really need to buy any books and I think that's where I was going, going wrong last year I loved filming them and I was kind of like filmed them as a filler video and didn't really need to buy the books that I brought in those videos and three, there's only one book that I really need and want to get right now. So this is going to be a very, very small segment of this video. But I'm hoping the whole video overall is a fun collective video regarding the books I've been buying, pre-ordering and kind of collecting at the beginning of 2022. So without further ado, we are on my Amazon because there is one book in particular that I really, really want to read. I want to own my own because I already have the first two books in the series and I'm hoping to do a whole vlog reading them in February ready for Valentine's Day and that is to read the Kiss Quotient, I was going to say Kiss of Deception and that is to read the Kiss, the Kiss Quotient series by Helen Juan and I have read the first two, the Kiss Quotient and the Bride Test but I haven't yet read the Heart Principle very kindly Leah gifted me the Kiss Quotient last year for my birthday after having read it 
via ebook. And then I think Emily, I'll be standard corrected and I'll edit it in if it's not Emily, but I'm pretty sure it was Emily, who gifted me the bride test for Christmas this year. So now I have both of them. I've read both of them via ebook previously. So now I both own the physical copies of them. And I was like, oh my God, it'd be so fun to reread them and then read The Heart Principle. But I don't own The Heart Principle. So I'm going to quickly buy this on Amazon with you guys now before jumping back into the other segments of the video, just as a little cutaway here. So let's go. It's in my wish list. So let's go into my wish list. That is Mark's wish list <laughs> with the camera lenses. Let's go into my book wish list and let's scroll down until we find it. I have a lot of books on here, but none that I either can buy right now because they're pre-orders because they haven't come out yet, or books I don't particularly need right now. So there's no point making this a whole video. I just want to have a little segment of a come book shop with me, which is buying one book because I need to restrain myself in book buying this year. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. It's not that expensive either. And then I'll have all three and I can do the vlog that I'm hoping to do in February ready for Valentine's Day rereading the Kiss Quotient, rereading the Bride Test, and then reading the Heart Principle for the first time. I'm really, really excited to do that vlog because I can barely remember the first two books. I can remember the Kiss Quotient a lot more than I can the Bride Test, but so I'm just excited to reread those two and then read the Heart Principle. So let's add that to my basket. And before I get distracted, I am going to go straight into my basket and buy it because <laughs> I do not need any more books. So let's proceed to, you never usually see me do this bit because I'm usually like, right, I've been filming for long enough now. Let's, let's scrap, trust me, I will buy them. And I do buy them, uh, but you never see me actually buying them. So let's proceed to check out. La la la. And it will come tomorrow, which is exciting because I have Amazon Prime. <laughs> uh, yep. Yep. And it's ordered! Yay! <laughs> so thanks for joining me on this little segment of the video and let's hop back into past or future Rachel regarding the next segment of this video. This is so chaotic, I love it. So as you saw, I have also purchased The Heart Principle in 2022. That is officially the third book that I have brought in 2022 so far. And I thought I was doing well with book buying and then the last couple of days I seem to have purchased quite a few, but it's fine. Three books in... 18 days isn't that bad, I don't think. But you might have noticed I said third book because the second book I have techni technically already purchased in 2022 is a pre-order. So now we're going to hop swiftly into the books I've pre-ordered already in 2022 because I'm anticipating their releases so much. And the second book I've technically purchased already is The Wrong Suitcase by Laura Jane Williams. What? Yeah, you heard that correctly. Laura Jane Williams has a novella coming out in February. I'm assuming because it's like a romance and it's Valentine's Day. I'm so excited. I found out about this book because Rosie tagged me in an Instagram post. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Rosie, because otherwise I would have had no clue and I would have completely missed it. It is only a novella, so it's only available as an ebook. So I did pre-order it on my iBooks account. I know I said I wouldn't, but this is the only chance I, and only way that I'll be able to read this book. And it was only 99p. So I pre-ordered it and it's coming out on February. <laughs> Let me check. It's coming out February 12th, which is so soon, technically, and I'm so, so excited. I'm sure I'm just going to cozy up on Valentine's Day and just binge that entire book because it is only a novella, and I'm so, so excited for it. All I know is that it follows two main characters who accidentally swap suitcases and a romance ensues from there. They pick up the wrong suitcases, they end up being each other's suitcases, and it just sounds like the perfect short novella romance for Valentine's Day, and I cannot wait to read it. So, of course, I have to pre-order Laura J. Jane Williams novella that comes out in February. Next book I have of course pre-ordered is The Secret Sunshine Project by Benjamin Dean. One of my favourite books of last year was Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean which was his debut novel and the fact that he has a brand new book out this year I had to pre-order it and I'm so so excited to get to it. 
It features in my anticipated releases video, which I'll link up above and down below if you want to know more about it. It does come out at March 31st. The next book I pre-ordered, and I only pre-ordered this because I thought it was coming out in 2021 and it didn't come out, but it has officially had a release date and I've officially pre-ordered it. So if it doesn't come out this year, I would have pre-ordered a book way in advance, but I'm pretty sure it comes out this year. And that is Dean Atter's brand new book. If you didn't know, he wrote the book, The Black Flamingo, and I gave it five stars in 2020. Absolutely adored it. It became one of my favorite books of that year. And he has a brand new book coming out, which is a YA called Only at the Weekends. And it basically follows our main character Character who is really struggling with love and he really doesn't know where love is because he's so fixated on having like a movie romance sort of relationship he's always loved romance movies and all this sort of stuff so he has really high expectations when it comes to relationships so when he finally gets a boyfriend he's like oh my god this is what like dreams are made of sort of thing and his boyfriend starts to become quite distant from him so when our main character has to travel up to Scotland because his dad gets relocated for a film job so his boyfriend really starts to distance himself from him and he's like this isn't what I was expecting this isn't what romance books and movies like teach me sort of thing about relationships and then he falls for another main character on the movie set so I'm so so excited for this one I don't know if it's in prose or if it's like verse I have no idea but I'm so so excited for it and that one comes out May 12th, so quite a while for that one. The next book, and the second to last book I have pre-ordered so far in 2022, is one of my favorite booktubers, brand new books that comes out this year. I'm so, so proud of her. I'm so grateful I can call her a friend in this community. And that is M from A Little Writer M. She has a brand new book coming out and I'm so, so excited. She has had one self-published book in the past. I'm pretty sure it's self-published, but I could be wrong, called Mine, which I absolutely loved, completely related to the main character. And I read that in 2020 when I first found out about M's channel. And I was like, oh my God, she's an author. I need to read her book because I love her so much before I was even friends with her. And I absolutely adored that book. And I'm so, so proud of her that she has been published officially by HarperCollins, the York or like Leeds sort of art branch of uh, HarperCollins. So, so proud of her and I'm so, so excited to read her book. We have very, very similar reading tastes when it comes to contemporary and romance. And the fact that this book encompasses everything I love about a contemporary romance, I just think I'm absolutely going to adore it and I have to pre-order it to support M. And this book is called The Heartbreak House Share and it comes out on August 1st. And all I'm gonna tell you guys about it is it follows four friends who all have a house share like situation together. And it includes friendship, figuring out your life in your late 20s, early 30s, fake dating is involved, she said, and it's a romance. What more could I want in a book? Four of my like book buzzwords are featured in the synopsis of M's brand new book and I cannot, cannot wait to read it. I'm so, so excited and I cannot wait to have it in my hands and just be like, yes, M, you published another book. I'm so proud of you. So yeah, I'm super, super, super excited for this one. And the last book I pre-ordered is a book I'm so, so excited for. I'm a little apprehensive about it though, and that is Ali Hazelwood's brand new book, Love on the Brain, which is the companion series book to The Love Hypothesis, which if you guys know and you've watched my best books, I'll link up above and down below if you haven't seen it, but The Love Hypothesis was my best book of 2021. And the fact that she has a brand new book coming out this year, I have to pre-order it. And I pre-ordered it under the understanding that it was a direct sequel to The Love Hypothesis. So I was like, yes, I need to pre-order it. I cannot wait to see what like Olive gets up to and all this sort of stuff, but it's a companion. So it doesn't follow the same characters. But nevertheless, I loved her writing style. I loved the fake dating trope in that book. I loved the, the dynamic between the two main characters and the relationship and the romance. So I'm sure I'm gonna love Love on the Brain. So I'm still super excited excited to read it I'm just the love hypothesis was so so good like one of my new favorite books of all time that I'm just a little bit wary of love on the brain but I'm so glad that I pre-order it so I can read it as soon as it comes out and that book comes out on August 23rd 2022 so some of them are quite far away but those are all the books I pre-ordered so far in 2022 now let's hop into past me which was yesterday when we went to the library let's go to the library I am hoping that I can one request anything can happen by Lucy Diamond. Fingers crossed I can request that and get it within the month of January. 
I would much prefer to read the physical copy than the ebook I have on my phone. And secondly, when I went in there before Christmas, there was Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. And one of my prompts for this month in January is to read a book with P because I got a random letter. The random letter generated me a P. So Tori Peters would work with that. And I really do want to get to Detransition Baby. So I'm hoping they still have that in there. So those are my two goals for the library, but I'm just going to have a browse and kind of see what's there, see what takes my fancy, see if anything fits the prompts that I have for January that I could read in January, because I don't want to just pick up books for the sake of it, because I need to read them in January. So let's go to the library. I didn't feel much in there because the library is very small and self-conscious I don't want to get told off for filming in there if I'm not allowed etc but I did pick up I'm out of breath for some reason I did pick up two books I'm actually really excited to read but I didn't want to own my physical own physical copies just in case I didn't like them and then I would have wasted money because if you guys know one of my goals in 2022 is to be more mindful why am I so out of breath <laughs> To be more mindful when it comes to buying books and only buying books that I either have already read and already know I love or buying books that I like autobiographical authors and I know I'm going to love what they write. So these two books I was unsure, I haven't read either of these authors before but I am really really interested in reading them nevertheless. The first one is very outside my typical genre which is why I want to use the library more so I can read books like this and if I don't like them no money has been wasted. Why am I so out of breath? I'm good. I've been spinning every single day in January. My cardio and stamina should be up there in the top tier. Anyway, the first book is Leave the World Behind. And this is a thriller, I believe. A and Clay enjoying a taste of the good life when Ruth and GH, an older couple who claim to own their remote holiday home, they're staring in, arrive seeking shelter. These strangers say that their power outage has swept the city, but with no phone service and internet down, the facts are unknowable. What has happened back in New York? Is the holiday home a truly safe place for their families? Or are they safe from one another? It's actually under 300 pages, which is one of the prompts for my January TBR. So hopefully I can get to this in January. Nevertheless, these books are with me for three weeks. So they will go into February if needs be. And the second one, which I don't think I'm going to get to in January, is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I'm so, so excited to get to this. And when I saw it, I have to pick it up. I don't think I'm going to get to it in January, but that's absolutely fine. I can renew it. I just wanted to grab it while I saw it because my library is small. There's only usually one book per like one copy per book so I wanted to grab this before anyone else did so so excited to get to it and it does feature on my 2022 TBR if you haven't seen that I'll link up above but this is a book that I definitely want to get around to this year and I'm so glad I managed to find it in my library so those are the two books I brought out it's also successful in the fact that I have requested The Transition Baby because yes I do have an ebook copy of it but I prefer reading physical copies so I like pre-ordered that and when it comes in I'll get an email so I can go pick it up and I've also requested anything can happen by Lucy Diamond I'm praying it comes in before the end of the month because no one else has requested it so as soon as it comes in it'll be mine so I'm really really hoping it comes in in the next week so I can read it before January is up if not I'll probably just hold off and fit the new release prompt for something else but yeah that is my little library haul and the books I have requested at my library that should be coming in soon. And yeah, I am just loving using the library at the minute and just getting books that might be outside my typical genre that I'm not sure I'm gonna like and not spending money on them. So I can like step, put my foot in the water and kind of see what my view is on the book before spending eight, nine, 10 quid on a book that I might not enjoy. So yeah, that is my library little section of this video. Back to sitting down Rachel, I guess, or some other Rachel in past or present. <laughs> And there we have it. Those are all the books I've accumulated so far in 2022. Quite a hefty stack, to be fair. Let's do a little stack, because I, I love a good book stack. I love a good book stack. So those are all the books I required so far, kind of in 2022, because obviously most of these are Christmas book haul books that I like got in 2021, but I haven't shown you guys yet. So I've actually only brought three books. I've borrowed two from the library. So really I've only accumulated five, but this stack is obviously a bit bigger because I wanted to show you guys the books I was gifted for Christmas, which once again, I'm so, so grateful for. But yeah, so far so good on the book buying habit in 2022. If you saw my video where I spent 500 quid across the entire year in 2021 on books and I go across all my stats, I basically said I wanted to spend less money on books and be more mindful when it comes to book buying. And I definitely think I'm doing that so far in 2022. I know we're not that far into it, but start as you mean to go on. If you haven't seen that video and you like stats and you like book buying habits and all that sort of stuff, then I'll link up above and down below for you guys to check it out. 
But I think that kind of wraps up today's video. If you enjoyed this like mismatch of vlog content and sit down video stuff, then make sure to like this video so I know to kind of do more similar videos in the future. But if you did enjoy it, make sure you give it a massive thumbs up. Subscribe down below to see future content from me. I do anything from book hauls, weekly reading vlogs, themed reading vlogs, book recommendation videos. I have lots of bookish content here on my channel for you guys to enjoy. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more future uploads. And without further ado, I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.